Meeting of the Brockton City Council for June 28, 2021 shall come to order. Please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> As I recognize a quorum, there are a couple of preliminary uh, matters to let you know about. We have a number of people who would like to be approved for soliciting for a company here in Brockton. I believe there are about 20 individuals. So that can be taken collectively under suspension of the rules. We would read each of the names. The ladies and gentlemen would step forward. You would have an opportunity to ask any questions. The manager of the group is here, so he can explain to you the nature of the company, the hours of operation, the days of the week. That's the first announcement. Number two, uh, there is a late file to allow a representative of Fuss and O'Neill, which is a company that is working on our integrated wastewater, uh, integrated water structure, to make a presentation to the council. That will come at the end, but that is a late file. That it, it's necessary to hold this informational hearing for us uh, as part of the grant application or grant award. So, having said that, would the clerk please call the first agenda item? Number one, acceptance of the minutes of the June 1st, 2021 Special City Council meeting. Accepted and filed. Thank you. Acceptance of the minutes of the June 14th, 2021 Special City Council meeting. Accepted and filed. Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Azak. I would like to make a motion to take items uh, three, four, and five collectively and act on them this evening. Motion made to take three, four, and five collectively, collectively and act this evening and it properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed, would the clerk please read the appointment. Appointment of Brian J. Benvy to the rank of Lieutenant in the Brockton Police Department. Number four, appointment of Reuben A. Del Valle, Del Valle to the rank of Sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. Appointment of Stephen B. Pierce to the rank of Sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. And Chief Gomes is here also. Gentlemen, would you stand please? Is uh, Steve here? Are all, all present? Uh, uh, motion to move back. Uh, Brian Benjamin Jr. Uh, is on the agenda for the occasion for the schedule of the Any questions, counselors? All right, if not, we will proceed to uh, approve action under suspension of the rules this evening first. All in favor? All opposed? Now it is on confirmation of the appointments. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The appointments are confirmed. For a motion for reconsideration in the hopes that it does not prevail? Motion to reconsider in the hopes it does not prevail. Second. Second. All right. Motion for reconsideration in the hope it does not prevail is made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Reconsideration fails. Thank you. Be safe, gentlemen. Be safe. Congratulations. Uh, item number six. Appointment of Anthony Michael Branch, 25 Montello Street Extension, Brockton, Mass., as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Referred to the Finance Committee. Co uh, I'm sorry. I've been standing. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to take this item under suspension of the rules and act on it this evening. Second. Second. All right. There's a motion made and seconded to act on this this evening under suspension of the rules. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? No. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? No. Um, because there's at least one no, the um, matter cannot be adopted tonight. Matter referred to FinCom. Item number seven. Hearings. Petition of Adilson Depina, DBA AAT Real Estate Investments, LLC. 
787 Main Street, Brockton, Mass., for a transfer of name and removal of previous partner, Walter Miranda, on garage license. In City Clerk's Office, June 8, 2021. Hearing assigned for June 28, 2021. Fire Department has no objections, and all paperwork is on file. All right, the time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is Mr. DePina here, our attorney? Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, Scott Rubin on behalf of the petitioner here, Adilson DePina uh, from Whitman, Mass. Um, it's really uh, number seven and number eight essentially are uh, combined. Uh, I don't know if the council wanted to hear both hearings together. Um, it's essentially a garage license along with a motor vehicle repair for the same location. Um, if, if, the, if the council is willing to do so, if not, we'll certainly take each one separately if that's, if that's okay. Why don't we do each one separately? Uh, is there any, any questions for the attorney? Any questions? Anyone else here in favor? Anyone else here in favor? If not, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Anyone here in opposition? Is there anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Mr. President? Uh, Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. This property is located in Ward 4. I assume we're going to vote on the garage license first. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to say, um, Mr. DePina has been terrific to work with. It's been more than a year, in part because of COVID, that we're working on this transfer of license. And um, any information that the city asked for, or that I asked for, he provided in a prompt way. He returned my calls. He's just been terrific. And, and he's, there's been some misfortune, including fires, um, at the location. And he's just soldiered on. And I, I do support this this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? The question comes on granting the petition. All in favor? All opposed? It's granted. Item number eight. Petition of Adilson DePina, DBA Auto Pros Repair Center, LLC, 787 Main Street, Brockton, Mass., for transfer of name and removal of previous partner, Volta Miranda, on motor vehicle repair mechanical license. In City Clerk's Office, June 8, 2021. Hearing assigned for June 28, 2021. Fire Department has no objections, and all paperwork is on file. All right, the time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. Anyone here in favor? Again, Scott Rubin here, uh, Silverstein and Creed in Brockton on behalf of the petitioner, Adilson DePiner again. Uh, this is a uh, sort of a transfer between partners for this motor vehicle repair. Uh, as Councilman Castro said, this is going to be uh, a brand new building at this location that had suffered a fire and the property was in desperate need of repair. Uh, Adilson has been a couple of times before the planning board already uh, and he plans to invest uh, upwards of $150,000 to completely renovate uh, this building. A uh, brand new office on the first and the second floor, four new garage bays. Uh, it'll have all new equipment in it. And I think uh, on the corner of Main and Tribu Street, so I think this particular area of the city uh, is desperate for an investment uh, in this particular business. It's been a motor vehicle repair shop for quite a number of years. And this is really an ideal location uh, to continue that. Uh, it's been dormant, uh, again, as the councillor mentioned, it's been COVID and with the fire, uh, this property uh, needs is in need of a, a rehabilitation and this is a, he's willing to invest his hard earned money uh, in this location for that. Uh, Adilson did work with Councilor DeCastro, has reviewed the stipulations that um, were provided, um, also spoke with Chief Williams, Deputy Chief Williams, excuse me, uh, earlier. Uh, today and um, he's willing to accept the stipulations that uh, had been presented to him. So uh, with that, um, certainly we, we'd ask that the, the council uh, support this transfer. Any questions, councilors? Anyone else here in favor? Anyone else here in favor? If not, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that part of the hearing closed. The question comes on granting. Uh, Councilman DeCastro. Thank you. Before we grant, would you like me to read the stipulations into the record? Yes. Uh, Mr. President, 
Uh, yeah. uh, I don't think that that's necessary. I've watched Councilor Nicastro read 16,000 stipulations for everybody that comes in front of us all the time. And frankly, I think she oversteps, and I really don't think it's necessary. Thank you. Well, Councilor, she has a right to read the stipulations, and then we have a right to enter them into the record. So, Okay, Councilor and then Nicastro. on another note for the, the parties involved, whenever stipulations are presented Councilor. by Councilor Nicastro, please be sure that you follow all of the stipulations, and if you have any trouble, reach out to your other counselors because it's come to my attention that she oversteps. She's not code enforcement. She is a counselor, so let's make counselor. sure she's not overstepping her duties counselor, here. You are out of order. We are talking about agreed upon stipulations. These yes, are agreed. Counselor, I have the floor, please. Mr. You're President, you're talking about agreed upon stipulations. Mr. The President, uh, just one moment. To be t through you to Councillor Cardozo, I'm just stipulating these licenses, and I've explained this to this. You're not a prosecutor, uh, you're not on zoning. You're a I'm speaking. Thank you. I'm, it Council is my turn. Castro has the floor, please. I'm Council. just tired of it. Just take well, care of your stipulations counselor. before you come in front of me. Body. You may be tired of it, but we operate under Robert's rules. She has the floor. Uh, Councilor Nicastro. Thank you. These stipulations mirror what the city ordinance says um, so that applicants understand and it's part of their license and they have a better chance of reading it and seeing it and following it if this is here. This is not overreaching. This is absolutely appropriate. Big time overreach. Thank especially you. Especially when you visit so the, 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 the different garages to enforce. Counselor, you're not a code enforcement you officer. Of you're a counselor. Thank you. And so, uh, number one, applicant agrees that at all times during the term of this license, the business operated pursuant thereto will comply with all city, state, and federal laws and regulations. Number two, hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, closed Sundays and all legal holidays. Number three, hours of operation will be posted outside using a minimum of two-inch letters. Number four, the premises and sidewalks shall be kept neat, clean, and free of all debris at all times. Number five, all outside storage of the premises of auto uh, of automotive parts, byproducts, including without limitation oil, grease, gasoline, etc., and debris is prohibited. Number six, outside parking spaces will be sized not less than uh, nine by 20. Number seven, the maximum number of vehicles on the premises associated with this business during the day is 11 outside and four inside the building, including employee and customer vehicles, as well as vehicles in need of repair. Number eight, all outside storage of vehicles is prohibited on Main Street, Tribu Street, and all public ways. In addition, no vehicle associated with this business will be parked or stored anywhere other than in the spaces provided as set forth herein. Number nine, the maximum number of vehicles to be stored on the premises overnight is nine outside and four inside, inclusive of all vehicles associated with the license holder. Number 10, all vehicle repair work must only be undertaken inside the building on the premises. Number 11, per city ordinance, each off-street parking space must have an area of not less than 180 square feet, exclusive of access drives and aisles, and a minimum width of nine feet. Applicant acknowledges the outside parking spaces will conform with the ordinance. The 11 outside and four inside parking spaces are shown on the site plan submitted with the application and must be properly striped with four inch wide painted stripes, including cross hex sections. Number 12, no painting, priming, or bonding of vehicles will be performed on site unless and until Brockton Fire Department approves a completed paint booth in writing. Number 13, no wrecked, damaged, or dismantled motor vehicles or parts thereof will be placed or stored outside on the premises at any time. 14, any dumpster will be properly fenced per ordinance and or state law and shown on plan provided with application. 15, no coin operated machines, including without limitation vending machines and payphones, will be installed outside the building. 16, further this license is uh, specifically conditioned upon the property owner 
AAT Real Estate Investments, LLC, maintaining a garage license. 17, upon acceptance of this license, the applicant slash license holder acknowledges that any violation of the stipulation set forth herein is punishable pursuant to city ordinance by a fine of $360 per offense per day and will be the reason for revocation of this license. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any questions from legal counsel on that? I, I take it you both have taken a look at all of that? And yes, and I'm not sure this has been signed, so I don't know if you needed a sign. Um, he, oh, thank you. He's already signed it. I have them. Oh, you have it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So now, uh, Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Can I just ask Mr. Dilson a question, if I can? Sure. sure. Can you Why come up? Mr. Now, I see the hours of operations here from 8, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Is that something that you feel comfortable that you can do? Or? I, I think uh, if I could uh, answer uh, Council Rodriguez, I think his, he was considering 7.30 uh, to 7 and 7.30 to 3 on Saturdays, but um, this was the court enforcement officer said no. Just, uh, this was, Council this, Rodriguez has the floor, please. This is what was presented. I know other licensees do have um, that available for hours. So, even so if we didn't open at eight. The opportunity to open a little earlier is always. We'd rather have more hours than less, and then just work the hours that that any you know business, depending on business, would work. But I don't. We really didn't want to make well, this, any waves. This is the, the right place to discuss these types, types I, of things. So uh, Council Nicastro made a suggestion in terms of the uh, hours of operation, but we all vote on this. So I just want to make sure that if he's comfortable with that, then he's comfortable with that. If he's not comfortable well, with that. Uh, if, he, uh, if the hours could be changed, uh, I definitely like it to have a little change on that. Just, just because you never know one day you stay a little late I don't want to get any uh, stipulation because I stay 30 minutes late or something. Because sometimes uh, vehicles can be very difficult. If you have some customer here waiting for vehicle, you have to give it delivered. If the time is, you get 10 minutes to finish, I want to make sure that uh, I have the, the time to do it. If there will be no uh, problems, I will, if it could be changed, if everyone does the, the, has those same so, hours. So what hours are you looking at? Like he was saying to me. 7.30 to 7. 7.30 to 7. Monday through Friday and just uh, 7.30 to 3 on Saturdays. Mr. President. Uh, hold on, please. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez, are you concluded? No, I'm not done yet. I'm okay. Okay, so because I want to make sure that you understand all the stipulations that we'll put into play. Right. That if you don't follow those stipulations and you sign the dotted line, you're going to be responsible for those types of things. And there's no calling anybody up here in terms of saying, yeah. hey, look, the police came down and did this. So before you say yes to everything, you want to make sure it's something that you can definitely live with. Because if you can't live with it, this is the time to, to speak up. Because if you don't, I mean, I agree with her because I, I have... My folks live in that, and my daughter lives on the, off that street. I used to live on Tribu Street, mm -hmm. so, and I've noticed some problems with some parking around that corner and stuff. If it's something that you have a problem with, this is the place to, to speak up and say it, because if you don't, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have to live with it. I just wanna make sure you understand clearly before you sign something that that's what we're talking about. Thank you. We did, we did go through them. And they're similar to the, li the conditions that were on the previous license as well. Yeah. And none, none of the rest of them, and including the hours, I mean, the hours are yeah, well, acceptable, but we'd prefer something expansive. But the rest of them are, are acceptable for a type of business. Well, like let me business. ask you a question. Do you know what, what time some of the other facilities down in that end of the city operate, time-wise? Um, I haven't canvassed them, but I think that there are other licensees that do have those hours that we ask for. Um, but again, as a matter of whether or not, I, knew, I know the repair licenses have had a series of controversies in the city, and I, and I know that depending on the neighborhood that each license is in, whether or not the city is, as, or the councilors is taking a, a sort of a citywide approach as to 
conformance of hours to the same as everybody, or are we just trying to, as, as these licenses come up for transfer or renewal, whether or not we're trying to control the hours more than, than others? I, I'm not really sure where we are as far as that goes, as far as the city's position on that. So I think there are other uh, shops that are open as early as 7.30. Um, we've had other licenses, I think, that had, have that, but I didn't really want this to make, I didn't want to make this a very controversial hearing tonight, but, uh, you know, that, that no, certainly There's nothing be controversial about it. I mean, this is basically what we come in. You're coming in front of the body to, uh, to get a license, right. and we have the right to go back and forth and, and say the things that we want to say before, you know, we vote on a license for you. So I just want to make sure you guys are clear about that and you don't come back in another couple of weeks or so and say, hey, this is unfair, this is an unfair. Because if it's unfair, this is the time that you speak up sure. and let us know. That's how it goes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're Mr. welcome. President. Council Lally, you have not spoken yet. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would just, you know, say briefly that, uh, you know, Councilor Castro is being very, uh, very, you know, very smart laying out these, um, these provisions, these stipulations. Uh, I have, you know, had experiences in my ward with businesses, uh, garages that did not have the appropriate uh, stipulations and took advantage of them. So it, it's nothing to, you know, besmirch the, the character of any applicant or anything like that. This is just to make sure that the quality of life for the, the constituents of the councillor's ward remains the same, which is what we were sent here to do. Uh, with that in mind, uh, and having seen the back and forth going on, uh, I would at this time, Mr. President, call the vote. All right, the uh, matter has been called by Councillor Lally. Uh, we now proceed to, to a vote on this matter. Uh, well, I, I, I wanted to make an amendment to... Uh, the vote's been called, there's no debate. Um, it, could get, it could get called, but I, I was hoping you were going to do that. But now that the matter has been called, there is no debate. However, if we do not vote to call the the vote, as I understand yeah, it, because I, I think I was back. just going to I was going to offer a compromise. I mean, I uh, Councilor Nicastro offered 16 different items, and I think two wouldn't make a much of a difference. Councilor, if this vote fails, you you we will go back, and you will be able to uh, offer your okay. amendment. So. All right, so the vote is to call the question. Uh, that motion be question removed. Over there yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a comment through you to um, Councilor Rodriguez. This is a 2013 license. I was not on the council then. The hours that are specified on the stipulations are from the 2013 license. We're transferring a license tonight. These hours were not my idea. I I'm not imposing these. They were on this license that he's accepting a transfer of tonight. Yeah. And I've been dealing with Mr. Mr. DePina for a while. He, he's had these, these stipulations since the weekend. He did not mention to me that he wanted a diff perhaps different times until I, we spoke right out in the chamber before we began. I, I, I said to him at that time, I'm amenable to changing your hours. Just come back and see me. We'll do that. So, so I'm, I'm kind of being mischaracterized here. No, These no, I'm not. my hours. They Mr. were on the Mr. license. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, why don't, why don't we do that? That was a point of information on the origin of your stipulations. The question has been called. It is now a roll call vote. If you are in favor of calling the question, you will vote yes. If you are not in favor of calling no, the, the question, been question called. Question. The, the question has been called. The question has been called, so the vote would be on a granting with the, co with the conditions that uh, Councilman Castro has read. Okay. The question is on granting with the stipulations that have been offered by Council and the Castro. If you are in favor of that, you would vote yes. If you are not, you would vote no. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? No. Cardozo? No. Ian Airy? No. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Mendez? No. Monaghan? No. De Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? No. Thompson? No. That fails two to eight. All right, that fails now. Councilor Rodriguez, do you wish to be heard? Yeah, yes, Mr. President. All I want to do is basically just going by what the, uh, the petitioner was saying that he feels comfortable. Uh, again, he's operating his business, and we all know what COVID has done to a lot of businesses in this community. And I think if we're going to be uh, business friendly, I think we've got to work with the businesses that we have. And if he states that 
a half hour is going to make a difference to his life. I think we owe it to him to basically make the hours of operations from 7.30 in the morning to 7 p.m. at night, Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday from 7.30 to 2 uh, p.m. in the afternoon on Saturday. All right. And so that's in the form have, of a motion. We now have a motion that has changed the application hours and conditions. Did everyone hear Councillor Rodriguez's motion? I second it. All right, it's been moved and seconded to change the hours. And I assume you've heard that. Any, no further comment needed? All right, so now we proceed to a vote on granting with the new stipulations, the change in the hours. And with the clerk, please call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. It is granted. Thank Good you. Good luck, man. Thank you very much. You. Good luck. Councilors, we now proceed. Oh, Council Rodriguez. Oh, you got it. Uh, the, the next item. <coughs> Ready for the next item? Yeah, you go ahead and make your motion. Yeah, Mr. Mr. President, I'd like to move to uh, take items 9 through 30 uh, collectively Second. as previously discussed. Actually, point of information, could, could you make your motion 9 through 15, 17 through 23, and 25 through? I'd like to make a motion, as the clerk said. 25 through uh, 30, because two of the people have been removed. They've okay. no longer worked for the company. Right, so, so 9 through 15. So moved. And then what is what the other, Mr. Clerk? 17 through 23. 17 through 23. And 25 through 30. And 25 through 30. There's been a motion made to take these collectively and act on them this evening. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, Mr. Clerk, would you call the names? Petition of John Kivlin for a license to solicit and canvas on behalf of Vivint Inc. An installation monitoring and service <laughs> of security and smart home automation systems provider. Petition of Anthony Seglio, same. Petition of Joshua Page for the same. Petition of Jay Winter for the same. Petition of Ernest Curum for the same. Petition of Dylan Peterly for the same. Petition of Bruce McDermott for the same. Petition of Eric Berg for the same. Petition of Dylan Maroney for the same. Petition of Daniel Swayatek for the same. Petition of Gary Blau for the same. Petition of Christian Chapman for the same. Petition of Corey Scurry for the same. Petition of Curtis Miller for the same license. Petition of Devin Chapman for the same. Petition of Javier Engram for the same. Petition of David Chapman for the same. Petition of Stephen Schnallau, Schallau for the same. And petition of Brian Ravitt for the same. Petition of Robert Schlechter for the same. Would Brian step forward, please? Brian is the manager. He can answer questions about the nature of the business hours of operation and the days when this canvassing will be going on. So, Brian. Yes, thank you for having us. What was the, uh, Your Honor? Go ahead, just a brief presentation. Okay. <laughs> for those at home that may watch, what is Vivint and when will you be canvassing or soliciting? Sure. In? So, Vivint, uh, we do. We in installation monitoring and service of security and smart home products. So uh, we, we knock residential communities uh, Monday through Friday, typically about 2 p.m. until around 6 p.m. And then on Saturdays uh, about 10 p.m., excuse me, 10 a.m. until about 6 p.m. And we do that on foot, door-to-door -door residential areas, and then we schedule appointments for licensed technicians. Uh, to install products based on customer availability. I have a question. Council, is any questions? Uh, Councilor Cardoza. Hello, uh, Brian. So this Hello. is home security? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this, does this involve, um, what does it involve when you go to someone's home and you're trying to sell your product? Do they have to show you any type of information? Can you be more specific? Please? Okay, so for example, there are a bunch of canvases that go around trying to um, solicit business for electric companies. We have a huge community of non-English speaking people and they ask for private information from these people so that they can you know, sell their products. I wanna make sure that that's not what's happening here. If someone does not understand the language that folks aren't locking them into anything 
that they don't want to be. So that's why I'm asking what type of information. Yeah, and of course not. If someone doesn't understand, there certainly should be no business conducted. So if uh, when there's interaction and a customer would like to sign up, mm -hmm. we actually send the documents, whether it be in English or Spanish, mm -hmm. we have the option to do either language, to their uh, email so that on their own time, on their own device, they can fill it out as they prefer to, not even on our devices, to protect so their security. they're not asking the, cons the customer for any private personal information when they go to the homes? With the goal of being completely accurate, it depends on which you know, information you, know, you would consider private, but stuff that I would consider private would be like a social security number and things like that. That would be something that they would fill out on their own device, which uh, based on us sending them an email to fill out, or they don't have to if they don't want to, obviously. So they're just marketing the product. They're not asking for phone bills, electric bills, any type of documentation from the customer. Nope. Security and automation. Say it again. Sorry. Security and automation. So we would never need a phone bill or. I just want to make that. sure because we yeah. have a, a large community of folks that don't understand. So that when you go to their home, they're not offering information that could potentially put them at risk, especially seniors. Absolutely. Um, so just you know to be and careful. Absolutely, and just so you do know, we do have a. Uh, uh, favorable cancellation policy for seniors. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a 30 day right of rescission for anyone over the age of 70. Okay, again, if they're just marketing the product, that's one thing, but I would be very careful asking folks in this community for personal information. I've seen it too many times. Unfortunately, so have I. My mom who's 82 and has dementia, and it just happened the other day in a tenant that lived upstairs where they got her personal information. So I just want to make sure that the canvases are very Absolutely. Simple. Okay, thank I'm you. I'm sorry to hear that happen. Any other? Uh, Council Monaghan. Yes, good evening. Good do, evening. Do, do all of the uh, of your, your people have to go through a Corey check and background check and everything? Before? Absolutely. Okay. So in order to work for Vivint as a company, you go through a uh, FBI background check. Mm -hmm. And then in order to do this uh, in the state of Massachusetts, they have a very rigorous Massachusetts uh, license background check as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? Question now comes on granting to the group that has been identified by the, the assistant clerk, the names that were read. So all those in favor? All those opposed? It is a vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thirty-one. We're up to thirty-one, are we? Number thirty-one: Petition to place a non-binding referendum question on the November two, two, two thousand twenty-one city election ballot. Referred to the finance committee. I think, Mr. President, I think there are some folks here tonight that want to speak to this. Is that allowed? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that, this is not a public hearing, Councillor. Okay, so this was sent to, to this um, body on November oh, could 2nd. Could you suspend for correct? just a minute? Uh, yeah, Lieutenant, yeah. could you shut that door, please, because it's, uh, the, the noise is disruptive here, and I'm, I don't know if I'm the only one having trouble hearing. Thank you. This was uh, sent to the city clerk on November 2nd, and it hasn't been heard yet? I, I'm sorry, I missed that because of the noise. So according to the letter that we got, it says that the, the people's uh, platform was uh, sent to the clerk's office. Can we confirm that? November 2nd? No, this was I filed mean, last Tuesday. Oh, filed yeah. oh, it was filed last Tuesday to get on the November 2nd yeah. ballot. Yeah. Right. So there's no way we can hear it tonight? Nope. No? no? Not even for a first reading? No, nope. you can't. This, this is the first reading. Yeah, this is the first reading. Do a late file. Just to go to the This is the first reading in order. Right. Item number 32. 32. Right. Re re reports of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of June 2nd, 2021. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of June 21, 20 2021. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the city council amend the city of Brockton ordinances to include Juneteenth as a designated holiday. Accepted and filed. Communication from the mayor to the city council submitting a letter appointing Mr. Patrick Hill as interim commissioner of public works pursuant to chapter Massachusetts general laws chapter 41, section 61A, effective on June 18th, 
2021 at 4.30 p.m. Accepted and filed. Uh, communication from the DPW Engineering Superintendent to the City Council for the layout and acceptance of Sunset Avenue. Accepted and filed. Communication from the DPW Engineering Superintendent to the City Council for the layout and acceptance of Berkeley Street. Accepted and filed. Uh, the next two are not on your agendas, Councilors, uh, but uh, communication from the Mayor supporting the sale of Plot 114, Hillberg Ave, parcel ID 072267, a Butters Lot program. Uh, referred to... It's communication. Oh, it's a communication. I'm sorry. Thank you. Accepted and filed. Uh, and 37B, uh, communication from the Chairman, Board of Assessors on the same. Accepted and filed. <laughs> communication from the Mayor in accordance with the provisions and stipulations of Section 53E and a half of Chapter 44 of the Massachusetts General Law is recommending the reauthorization of Parking Authority Revolving Fund to receive revenues from parking violations fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. <clears> said funds to be expended by the Parking Authority to pay expenses of parking regulation enforcement, repair, and maintenance of lots, facilities, and equipment and capital projects. But expenditures for capital projects shall require the written approval both of the Parking Authority Board of Directors and the Mayor for fiscal year 2022. Amounts in excess of $250,000 shall be credited to the general fund. Accepted and placed. Yes, accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same? Accepted and placed on file. And a co communication from the Executive Director of the Parking Authority relative to the same? Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $1,052 from Assessor's Purchase of Service Consultants to Assessor's Personal Services Holidays. Accepted and filed. Acceptance, uh, excuse me, from the communication from the CFO relative to the same? Accepted and filed. Communication from the Chairman of the Board of Assessors relative to the same? Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $300,000 from non-net school spending to the Stabilization Fund? Accepted and filed. Communication from the CFO relative to the same? Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $700,000 from Department of Public Works Highway Division snow removal to the Stabilization Fund. Accepted and filed. Except, uh, excuse me, uh, communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the DPW Commissioner re uh, relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor recommending City, city Council authorization for the appropriation of and borrowing authorization for $19,100,000 for the purpose of paying costs of designing and constructing water system improvements without a detrimental impact on the continuous provision of the existing level of mu municipal services. Accepted and filed. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts Chapter 44 recommending that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditure of an additional grant award in the amount of $25,000 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, fiscal year 2021, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr., Community Safety Initiative Grant, to the City of Brockton Police Department, fiscal year 2021, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr., Community Safety Initi Initiative Grant Fund. Accepted and filed. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the Chief of Police relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide appropriation and borrowing authorization for $360,900,000 for the purpose of funding all or a portion of the unfunded pension liability of the retirement system of the City of Brockton. Accepted and filed. Uh, communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the Mayor recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $23,000 from parking authority full-time salaries to snow removal and $21,285 from parking authority part-time salaries to snow removal for a total transfer of $44,285. Accepted and filed. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and filed. Communication from the yeah, Executive Director of Parking Authority requesting the following transfer of funds from parking authority full-time salaries $23,000 and parking authority part-time salaries $21,285 to snow removal $44,285. Accepted and filed. From the mayor supporting the sale of plot 66243 Green Street, parcel ID 051-081, a Butters Lot Program. Accepted and filed. Communication from the chairman of the Board of Assessors relative to the same. Accepted and filed. 
Item 61. Item 61, ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 3, Division 2, Section 2 127, pay plan. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2 127, is hereby amended by striking $25,000 in the rate column for Director of Emergency Management and inserting in its place $35,568 so that the pay plan for the Director of Emergency Management in City Council, May 24, 2021, amendment passed by a roll call vote. Passed to a third reading as amended by a roll call vote. In City Council, April 12, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. Councilors, the question is now on final passage by a roll call vote. If there's no debate, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. Item number 62. Ordinance. An ordinance amending section 2-181 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Section 2-181 is repealed in its entirety and in its place the following is inserted. The city solicitor, solicitor shall be an active attorney at law in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, properly licensed and in good standing with the Massachusetts Bar Association. He or she shall have a minimum of five years of experience in the practice of law in Massachusetts with a thorough knowledge of Massachusetts general laws, including municipal law. He or she shall have demonstrated trial experience, including the research, preparation, and management of civil or criminal cases during the various stages of litigation. The provisions of Section 2-110 of the revised ordinances shall not apply to this position. However, where two or more candidates have equal qualifications and experience as determined by the mayor, preference shall be given to a resident of the city or a candidate willing to move into the city within one year of appointment. Favorable as amended. In City Council, July 27, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. Mr. President. Councilor DeCastro. I just wanted to point out that the amendment is where we stated Massachusetts Bar Association. It's been replaced with Massachusetts Board of Bar Overseers. Mm -hmm. Do you have that amendment? We would. We'll have a brief recess. Councilors, we're back in session. The clerk will read the amendment. We will vote on the amendment first. An ordinance amending section 2-181 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained by the City Council of the City as follows. Section 2-181 is repealed in its entirety and in its place. The following is inserted. The city solicitor shall be an active attorney at law in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, properly licensed and in good standing with the Massachusetts Board of Bar Overseers. He or she shall have a minimum of five years of experience in the practice of law in Massachusetts with a thorough knowledge of Massachusetts general laws, including municipal law. He or she shall have demonstrated trial experience, including the research, preparation, and management of the civil or criminal cases during the various stages of litigation. The provisions of Section 2-110 of the revised ordinances shall not apply to this position. However, where two or more candidates have equal qualifications and experience as determined by the mayor, preference shall be given to a resident of the city or a candidate willing to move into the city within one year of, of appointment. Right. The, yeah, the hand vote is now on adopting the amendment. All in favor of the amendment? All opposed? The amendment is adopted. We will now do a hand vote. I have a typo here. This is on third reading, not final passage. Third reading. So pass to a third reading. Those in favor? Those opposed? It is a vote. 63. Mr. President? Uh, Councilor DeCastro. Thank you. I'm off I just wanted you to know I'm offering an amendment to number 63, and it has been distributed to my colleagues. All right. 
clerk read 63 first. 63, an ordinance amending Article 2, Section 1.004 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton. Be it ordained by the City Council, Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Section 1.004, Regulation of Marijuana Sales, is amended by adding the following as sections where appropriate. A, there shall be no more than two licenses issued for the delivery of marijuana products pursuant to regulations promulgated by the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission. Priority shall be given to an applicant for a license to deliver marijuana products who currently holds a license for the conduct of marijuana businesses within the city of Brockton. There shall be a moratorium on the issue of any license to allow social consumption of marijuana for a period of two years from the date of adoption of this ordinance. Favorable as amended in City Council March 22, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. All right, Council Nicastro. Oh, thank you. I will defer to the Legislative Council. She will read it into the record. So the favorable as amendment um, that came out of ordinance would result in this ordinance only reading as follows. There shall be a moratorium on the issuance of any license to allow social consumption of marijuana for a period of two years from the date of adoption of this ordinance. Um, so before you vote on that, Councilor Castro just has an additional line that would get added in that would put in a brief moratorium on uh, granting of delivery licenses. And what you also have in your agenda coming up is a proposal for adoption of those uh, delivery licenses, one for um, establishing the classes and the fees um, within your adult use and regulation, also um, a zoning one. So those are being submitted tonight, but just it's a proposal to add a moratorium for a short period of time so that those can be vetted uh, during the ordinance process and hopefully come before you probably September or so um, by the time it makes it out of the, the committees. And this is the process that we used back in 2018 when we adopted the uh, ordinances for retail and zoning. All right, so would you read the amendment once more though, uh, uh, Legislative yeah, Council? I do, okay. okay. Our, our Council on the Castro. The following amendment is hereby proposed so that the language reads as follows. Section 1.004, Regulation of Marijuana Sales, is amended by adding the following section where appropriate. There shall be a moratorium on the issu issuance of any license to allow social consumption of a marijuana for a period of two years from the date of adoption of this ordinance. And this is the additional language. There shall be a moratorium on the issuance of any license to allow delivery of retail marijuana for a period of 120 days or until such time as zoning and use ordinances are adopted by the city of Brockton, whichever shall occur first. All right, a that's a motion, is there a second? Can I have a question on the motion? I'll, I'll second it. It's second. been moved and seconded. All right, on the, uh, on the amendment, Councilor Cardozo. For Attorney Resnick, why couldn't the first part of this read the same? because I feel like I, I took part in that meeting that day, the ordinance meeting. I feel like there wasn't enough information for that body to make this decision. I feel like no one on that committee was fit for purpose to decide and didn't have enough information. I would have loved to have them hear from folks that you know have gone through the social equity application and know more about this um, industry and all of the equity issues around it to have made that decision on the moratorium. So why couldn't the same apply for the first part of this? Why um, couldn't we get, do the moratorium so it's not two years, it's 120 days until it goes through all of these? Are you and then that way we can bring in more folks to, to present to the council more information so that they have more clarity on. Are you asking if the moratorium on social consumption could be for 120 days? Yes. That's the will of the council. Yes. Nothing. Because I don't. I think two years is extreme. There's a lot more. It's it's changing all the time. There's a lot of information that I feel like the ordinance committee didn't have. They didn't have folks uh, in front of them to present <coughs> around the issue. So I don't think it's fair to do a two-year moratorium until they have the necessary information. But, so what, you know, I think 120 days is reasonable until we go through some of these other, um, you know, zoning and other the, these other. So what you could do, since the motion has been made and seconded, if that vote is not successful, then you could make a, a substitute amendment um, to have it apply that way. Okay. So I just, uh, you know, again, I think that it would have been nice. We had some folks that wanted to present in front of ordinance committee and they weren't allowed. Folks that have gone through social equity 
you know, programs who have a lot of information. Not to say Attorney Resnick or the city solicitor, they, they don't have the information, but there are folks that could have possibly persuade the ordinance committee to, to decide differently. And I think it would be great to hear from those folks. So if the council would entertain 120 days, I think that would be great so we can continue the conversation. All right, uh, Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm actually the one that made a, a, a strong point in terms of keeping the two-year moratorium in place because we're looking at two different issues. Uh, we're looking at the consumption and something that will affect the community more of an immediate uh, situation or more time-wise, uh, the delivery system that we are going to be talking about in terms of sending to ordinance so we can start talking about the mechanisms that we're going to put in place to deal with the, uh, with the delivery. Uh, I'm still going to go back and, um, and say that perhaps um, I think we need to, we're not doing a very good job when we talk to the community at large to basically explain what the certain procedures of this body is. Uh, we cannot expect uh, people to fill the, uh, the benches here and to They have to be invited and have to be put on the agenda for them to speak uh, at the council meeting. I think I'm blinking. I don't know why. But, but I, I think we got to do this. I think we got to do a better job in terms of um, in, in explaining these things out so that it doesn't look like uh, it's us against the community. It's us against the people sitting in the pews because um, we got we to be clear to, to, to a fact that, you know, like tonight, uh, we had a bunch of people showing up here for an, agenda, an item that's on the agenda that will be referred to a, another committee of this council. You know, it's not a public hearing, so now those folks have actually left because they were invited here to come in and speak uh, when we did not do a very good job in explaining to them that this was not the proper form for this particular thing. Um, I want to say a lot of things to the President of the United States, to the Senate and Congress, but I can't do that because there's a process and a, and a procedure in place that actually governs all that stuff. So I think we got to do this a little more uh, on, um, you, you know, to be honest, we got to be a little honest with the folks that we're dealing with in terms of uh, explaining exactly what the procedures are that we follow in this particular body. If people want, it, want this changed, you know, we can change it. There's laws that can change, there's ordinances that can change, but we can't just decide you know, on, on a whim in a sense that we're going to do these things to, to change, um, uh, to change things because we feel like it. I'm just, I'm just saying that we are confusing two things. There's two items in here. We know nothing about consumption, to be honest with you. Uh, we do know a great deal of what home deliveries are going to be because home deliveries are going to go along with the licenses that we provided in the community. And some of these uh, retail establishments are already doing this. Uh, so it's just an extension of what we're doing. But as far as the consumption is concerned, we know nothing about this. And frankly, people who are involved in this business, I, I, they can sit here and talk until they're blue in the face. They're not going to change my mind in terms of uh, dealing with the issues of opening up uh, consumption places all over the city. That at times, some of us that even come from within the ethnic communities have to somehow step up and say, you know what? We're not going to do it because you're saying you're going to do it. We're going to do it because it's the right thing to do. So I feel strongly that we ought to leave that be. Uh, two years comes within a snap of our fingers. I mean, by the time we get this particular uh, item in terms of the, uh, re uh, the delivery on, on the books, I mean, we're looking at six, possibly seven months by the time it's all said and done. So I think I, I feel strong about leaving the, the two years in place as is. Uh, you guys can vote whichever way you want to, but I want to make sure that my objection to it uh, is stated clearly that it isn't going to happen. You know, I don't care how many experts come up here and talk to us about this. It's not going to happen. So uh, we can do what, whatever we need to do uh, sitting up here. But I, I feel strong about this. I'm going to continue now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Just, Councilors, I would say that... Uh, as a note of personal preference here. I don't want somebody to tell me what I don't know or what I know. And I don't want someone speaking for me as to what research I do or who I talk to. 
So unless you've got a hidden camera over at 94 Braymore Road and you're monitoring my telephone calls, you don't know who I talk to. You don't know the experts that I may interact with. You don't know the people at the state level that I may talk to about these different issues. So I really rather resent someone or anyone presuming to speak about how I don't know enough about a particular topic. That's just me. The second thing I would say, just as a point of information, if the mayor doesn't issue a host community agreement, this is all moot. You can talk about social com consumption, you can talk about delivery. If he chooses, as the chief executive officer of this city, not to issue a host community agreement, notwithstanding a myriad of childish emails that come in, he doesn't have to do that. So we're going to take action tonight, but keep in mind the real decision maker is in the corner office. And if he doesn't feel social consumption is appropriate, he won't issue a host community agreement, whether we had a limit or not. If he doesn't feel delivery is appropriate, that office currently, even though there is a law on it being considered to change that, as I understand it, at the Cannabis Control Commission, the mayor is in charge of that decision-making process. So um, I don't know if you have anything else to add. If not, I'll go back to uh, anyone else. Uh, Councilor Nicastro has, uh, Councilor Cardoza has spoken. Anyone else before I go back? All right, Councilor Cardoza. Well, first of all, the folks that participated today on this item has nothing to do with what we're talking about here on this um, amendment. The folks that participated here today, I am so happy to see them. I hope that this audience is full every day of folks that are participating in government because this is a democracy and City Hall is theirs and they're welcome to come any time they want. They weren't invited by me. I asked the question, could this be heard today? We're going back to another agenda item because I was asked by my constituents to ask, okay? So, and that's my job, is to represent my constituents. Council, you should know the answer so, to that. So, okay, but you, as council president in this body, should make it clear to the people in your audience. So anyway, besides that, that has nothing to do with this amendment tonight. And none of us on this body are here to dictate what happens with these, with these things. We are here to make recommendations and to advise, okay? We still need to listen to our constituents and we still need to have them in front of us to inform us. That's all I'm asking you all to do. I'm not asking you to, you know, people listening in on your conversation. Nobody cares about your conversations. We all do our due diligence. We do our homework. This still is a part-time position. We all have jobs. So oftentimes we don't have time. Look at our agenda item. How many I items are on here this evening? There are how many, Mr. Clerk? 90, okay? I'm a registered nurse, I work full time, okay? Oftentimes, I may not have time to read all 90, do all this research, be up to date on all the information and all the current events. So I rely on my constituents to educate me. They educate me, I advocate for them. That's what a true city councilor does. Not sit here and dictate who can walk into this council, who's for social consumption or not. I don't know who's for social, I consume socially, I go to the bar and I drink. So if somebody wants to consume their marijuana in a safe environment, that's completely up to them and we haven't polled the city to figure out who's for it and who's against it. So we really need to be careful with this stuff. That's all I'm asking you. You saw lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit in this city because we're not being careful with how we handle these situations. And people are frankly upset about all of this and it comes back to the council. So all I ask, these could be two separate items for us to be careful in putting a two year moratorium on social consumption. I think that's a long time. I think 120 days is reasonable for us to do a little more homework on this, but 120 days is a long time and I'll be voting no on it. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? All right, so we're on the amendment, correct? Yeah, do you want me to do a roll call just for the amendment? Yeah, roll call on the amendment offered by Council Castro. Um, no way, Zach. Uh, Cardozo? No. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. The amendment carries nine to one. All right, so now we return to the original ordinance as previously amended by the first amendment. And we uh, 
Just Ms. go Mann? to a third, just vote into a third reading. We voted to, to a third reading by a roll, uh, strike that by a, a hand vote. So, eight to one. Ask to a third. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Councilor Cardo. So before that passage, can I offer my amendment or no? You may. Okay, so I am asking to amend the first section to read 120 days. So there shall be a moratorium on the issuance of any license to allow social consumption of marijuana for a period of 120 days from the date of adoption of this ordinance. All right, is there a second? Can I just clarify for the council? So because um, that second sentence relating to delivery came in as your amendment, um, your, that language would still be included with Council Cardoza's proposal. It just changes the two years to 120 days. Um, and again, this would, it's an amendment to an amendment already adopted. Um, and then the next vote would be passage to a third reading. This isn't something that um, passes tonight. No second. Everyone understand? All right. Is there a second to Councilor Cardozo's, Cardozo's uh, motion? A second. All right. There's, there's been a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, let's have a roll call vote on this. Uh, no way, Zach. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Mendez? No. Monahan? No. Nicastro? No. Rodriguez? No. Thompson? Yes. So that's uh, four in the affirmative, five in opposition. The amendment does not carry. We now go back to the original question on passage to a third reading as amended by the prior amendment, and that's by hand vote. All those in favor of advancing it to a third reading? All those opposed? One opposed. <clears throat> Item number 64. An ordinance amending revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Chapter 6, Article 1, Section 6.2, Composition. <clears throat> Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton that Chapter 6, Article 1, Section 6.2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be amended to strike the following prov provision. The increase in the number of captains in the fire department shall be for a limited time only. The additional position of an 18th captain as set forth in this amendment shall be eliminated and the number of captains allowed in said title in the fire department shall revert back to 17 immediately upon a vacancy occurring in said title for any reason including but not limited to the termination resignation retirement promotion or any other separation from employment by any one of the 18 captains the proposed amendment if adopted shall result in the ordinance reading as follows the fire department shall consist of a fire chief and the following assistants b 18 captains in City Council, May 10, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. So the question is on the amendment. No. Oh, it's just to a third, oh, to a third no reading. My apologies. Amen. All right, question is on passage to a third reading. Those in favor? Those opposed? Pass to a third reading. Item number 65. Ordered that the naming of North Manchester Street also have the honorary name of Ruth E. Silva Way in recognition of Ruth E. Silva, who was a resident of the city of Brockton and has fostered over 250 children on North Manchester Street. In City Council, May 24, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on Mr. President. by a roll call vote. We'll Mr. President. Please call the roll. Councilor Thompson. Thank first. you, Mr. President. <clears throat> so tonight, I stand to seek this council's approval of this order to honorarily rename North Manchester Street Ruth E. Silva Way. Last week at the Finance Committee, uh, we had the pleasure to hear from three gentlemen who spoke to the compassion, the steadfastness, and the integrity of Ruth Silva, who raised over 250 foster boys on North Manchester Street. One of those foster boys, Jeffrey Souza, uh, attended that hearing, and he spoke eloquently about how Ms. Silva changed his life and set him on a path to success as Ms. Silva has done with dozens of other boys. So I seek approval of this order because I believe it's fitting that we honor Ms. Silva with this name change. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? If not, question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. 
Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. I move for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded for reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail. Uh, all those in favor of reconsideration, all those opposed. Reconsideration fails. Item number 66. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of a donation in the amount of $3,000 from Easton Festival of Trees to the City of Brockton Police Department. In City Council, May 24, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. If there's no debate, would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 67. Ordered that the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of the Comcast Revolving Fund for fiscal year 2022 from all cash receipts from Comcast franchise fees in excess of $675,000 pursuant to the cable license contract and that further that the expenditure from this fund shall not exceed $750,000 without further appropriation during fiscal year 2022. In City Council, May 24, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. If there's no debate, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. 68. That the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of the demolition revolving fund for fiscal year 2022 for the sole purpose of helping to fund costs in connection with the demolition of buildings in the City of Brockton. The demolition revolving fund shall receive the receipt of all payments of all demolition charges of the City of Brockton. Expenditures from the demolition revolving fund shall be made at the direction of the building superintendent with the written approval of the mayor, provided that not more than $110,000 may be so expended from the demolition revolving fund during fiscal year 2022. The building superintendent shall comply with the reporting requirement of Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half. In City Council, May 24, 2021, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. If there's no further debate, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Harwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 69. Ordered that the City Council authorize the reauthorization of the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund for the purpose of maintaining the abandoned buildings registry as well as the closing, boarding up, and care of vacant and abandoned buildings. The vacant and abandoned building re revolving fund shall receive the receipts of payments of fines and fees for the registration of vacant and abandoned buildings. Expenditures from the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund shall be made on the authority and direction of the Brockton Building Commissioner provided that not more than $250,000 may be so expended without further appropriation from the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund during fiscal year 2022. The Brockton Building Commissioner shall comply with the reporting requirements of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half. In City Council, May 24, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. If there's no further debate, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 70. Ordered in accordance with the provisions and stipulations of Section 53E and one half of Chapter 44 of the Mass General Laws, that the City Council authorize the renewal for fiscal year 2022 of the revolving fund for revenues from parking fine violation fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. In City Council, May 24th, 2021, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. If there is no further debate, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? 
Yes. Cadozo? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 71. Ordinance, an ordinance amending the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Chapter 2, Article 3, Section 2-134, Holidays. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, the Chapter 2, Article 3, Section 2-134 of the City of Brockton City Ordinances shall be amended to include Juneteenth as a designated holiday. I refer to Chairman Ian Erie in the Ordinance Committee. Item 72. Ordinance, an ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the Revised Ordinance of the City of Brockton concerning the regulation and zoning and zoning of marijuana. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, Article 3, General Regulations and Permitted Modifications, Section 27-24.4, is hereby amended by adding the following language concerning the delivery of marijuana as attached. Also, uh, also sent to ordinance. Mr. President. Uh, Councillor Lally. Um, I would like to move to reconsider uh, item number 70. That was the, uh, the, the wrong item. W that w I meant to table that one. I just kind of, yeah. All right, there's been a motion made, and uh, did someone second it? Second. Why is it being um, tabled? Made and properly seconded. As a point of information, Mr. To President? To reconsider, yes, item 70. Go ahead. Um, uh, item 70, we spoke about this last week. Item 70 will be tabled, uh, or I will move tabled. to table item 70, and item 79 is the replacement. improved, edited, the replacement uh, version of that order. Uh, and the department head, Mr. Ackerson, and the CFO, Mr. Clarkson, are here uh, if anyone has any questions. Thank you. All right, so table, uh, well, let's move reconsideration first this time. Uh, go ahead. Um, during finance, there was interest in um, increasing that amount, but because um, this authority, this body can't increase the $250,000 that needed to come from the mayor, the discussion was that this would be tabled and a new one with an increased amount would be submitted by the mayor's office. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm looking at 79, unless I'm, my glasses aren't working all that well, it basically says $250,000. $250, so what's the difference between 70 saying 250 and 79 saying 250? Uh, Mr. Clerk, do you have additional paperwork? If I could, uh, it's actually the amount is not changed. There is verbiage that uh, precluded the, the parking authority from using it for certain items that they've needed to. Uh, the, actually, I think you might want Mr. Atkinson up here, but the key word is uh, under ex expenditures. Uh, yeah, but Mr. Mr. Clerk, uh, I think the whole discussion la when we were at FinCom last time, it was that there was a discussion about increasing it by another hundred thousand dollars, but I, I'm basically just looking at two fifty on seventy and then two fifty on seventy nine. So the amounts aren't changing. So right. any objection to having Mr. Claxon come? No, no. I want to explain to me because that isn't the way we uh, left Mr. it. Mr. Claxon, would you shed some light on this if you could? Right. Yeah. Mr. Mr. President. Do we have the table? Get in the middle of it. 70, have we tabled that first? We, we haven't yet. I thought it might be wise to hear from him to decide okay. maybe we let 70 stand and we table just, the other one. Just, I don't know. but I just want to make one point, if I could, Mr. President, because when we left the meeting, we were going to approve the $250,000 with no problem, and then he was going to go back and talk to the parking authority, as it should be, and get the extra 100000 and come back, and guess what we do? If you appropriate it, as the mayor would do, we will give them the 100000 What's the issue? Mr. Clarkson, am I wrong? You Thank even you. agreed with us. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. If I refer you to the differences between items 70 and 79, and I believe that the, the additional language, and I'll certainly defer to legislative council, but I believe that was the conclusion reached by the parties involved. So if you look at the language in number 70, which was what was originally submitted, is fairly succinct. But the item in number 79, although the amount is the same, it provides greater detail and provides instructions to the parking authority about how to spend the additional money. 
uh, but expenditures for capital projects shall be may require written approval of both the Parking Authority Board of Directors and the Mayor. Uh, it also, let's see, said funds to be expended by the Parking Authority to pay expenses for parking regulation enforcement, repair and maintenance of lots, facilities, etc. So uh, I believe that that additional language is what provides the flexibility for the additional spending. Hmm? All right, what, councilors, why don't we do this? Let's, let's reconsider 70 and then table it, and then someone can take a, make a motion to take 79 out of order. Mr. Clarkson mm. just explained that. Let's act on that, and then I think we've cleaned up those, uh, those uh, comparable so agenda them? items. So uh, all in favor of reconsideration on item 70? Item 70 now we reconsider. All right, all opposed? Uh, looks like three of Honestly, opposed. I'm just confused. Uh, what are we doing? Okay, item 70 was approved. Councilor Lally now pointed out that item 79 is a companion agenda item. It's a replacement. The companion agenda item is the one that apparently the parking authority, the mayor, and Mr. Claxon would like to see passed. So in order to do that, we would have to reconsider 70 table it so that it's out of the way, and then we could take item number 79 out of order, advance it, and approve it, and you've cleaned up those, those two competing, uh, those two uh, related agenda items. Does that help, uh, Councilor Azak? Sure, but does that give them, um, so that gives the, the option for the 100,000 extra that we spoke about? No. 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 Oh. I, I, from what I'm reading, the amount stays the same, but the specific purposes for which the amount could be used has been expanded to include additional items so that the parking authority and Mr. Ackerson have greater flexibility to address items with the spending. Have I, have I outlined that properly? That's my understanding, but again, I, so the, this language iteration uh, Is I, I would I would defer to, to legislative council because I, I I was not part of the process that created this latest iteration. So I want to be certain you're doing what you, you desire to do and not offer uh, a faulty opinion. Um, so seventy was originally going to be withdrawn and a new one was going to be submitted that would increase the two fifty. Because this council can't increase the two fifty on their own, that's why we couldn't do it as a committee. We needed a new order. So if you wanted the two fifty to be increased, it had to come in new. What ended up getting submitted was not an increase, was just additional language that you could have added. Um, but if they don't want the additional hundred thousand, that's that's okay. Um, I think what we were expecting 79 to say was uh, not what we were originally discussed. Any objection from Mr. Ackerson stepping forward? Can I just ask if 70 and 79 are yes, the exact ahead. same language? No, so they are very different. Well, not very different. They add a little bit of a caveat um, to the, it's the same appropriation, the 750. But it adds language that the um, that what they are to be expended for, and that um, expended for and also require the approval of the parking authority board. Whereas seventy didn't originally include that language. Okay. It's like a conditions rather than increase in appropriation. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. But the only reason why, Mr. President, that we're even having this discussion is because last Monday, uh, the discussion around increasing this thing from 250 to 350 was discussed. Otherwise, we would just go through this whole thing as a, as a norm in terms of approving that uh, revolving account like we normally do with everything else. So I'm under the impression that today we were going to get an order that came in that basically stated that the parking uh, authority executive director needed additional funding in order to run uh, what he needed to run. So if that's not the case, I don't know why we're actually going through this whole exercise just because the language changed. I mean, this language has been used for 
uh, since Christ was in junior high and it's, it was never a problem before, now all of a sudden we're changing the language, I don't quite understand. If the funds are not increasing, as we had talked about last week, that today we were going to see, uh, I remember it very well that the discussion was going to be that the executive director was going to go meet with his board, have the board, since they had absolutely no knowledge of the increased asking, that they were going to come back with, uh, you know, with that recommendation from the board, and we would introduce it as a, as a, as a new order stating that the amount is now three fifty, you know, uh, two fifty plus a hundred, uh, and it, apparently that's not what's taking place. Now we're just kind of changing the language for the sake of changing the language, and I like to know why we're changing the language. If I could ask, uh, and I go along with what you asked the parking uh, executive to come up and explain why. Why all of a sudden we're changing the language in this thing here, Mr. Clark? Oh, maybe. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. I, I, I can answer that question, Mr. President. And with thanks to the council for your indulgence and thanks to uh, who I had hoped to introduce later on in the meeting, but I'm happy to introduce as part of this with thanks to our acting budget director, Tiffany Ciasulo, for clarifying the issue to me. She was our point person on it. Uh, I would respectfully disagree with the, the uh, point just made by Councillor Rodriguez. In fact, the language in item 79 is the traditional language that you have voted on for years and years. For some reason, uh, last year, the language that was voted by the council to reauthorize the parking authority funds was that truncated language that appears in item 70. And so the interpretation correctly so of our auditing department was that that more limited language limited the parking authority's ability to spend the money as they had traditionally spent it. So it was not so much the amount, but the language that enabled the parking authority the flexibility to spend out of that revolving fund. But I'd like to know so, what happened with the, with the $100,000 asking. Well, I think that the answer to that, Councillor, is that through working together, my staff and the parking authority uh, executive director and the, I believe the, the auditing department, they were able to reach a consensus that, it, again, it wasn't the extra amount that was necessary, but the return to the original language that you voted before. So let me repeat, the, uh, the, the language in item 79 is the traditional language that you have voted in the past. And for whatever reason, what was passed the last time was some other version of that. So Councilor Rodriguez is correct that there was new language, but it was actually number 70, and number 79 returns us to the old language, so the additional amount isn't necessary because it provides the parking authority the flexibility that they've always had to spend out of that revolving fund. Well, Mr. Clarkson, I don't know if you can see this, though. Last week, the parking executive, the, the executive director of the parking authority came in and said, I need to have this amount increased because I can't function with $250,000. Now, all of a sudden, today, we're here saying, oh, no, that's fine. $250,000 is perfectly fine, and we're going to operate on two fifty. dollars So, I, so I, but I think what, and I'm not going to put words in the executive director's mouth by any stretch, but I think what he intended to mean uh, and I believe what, what he said was that he can't operate with the current funding as it was. And the language in number 70 limited the amount of the parking authority. I don't want to get, not to get too much in the weeds, but if you remember, we've uh, embarked on a process over the last couple of years to try to offer some more sunlight into some of those budgeted items that were spent but not voted on by the council. So in this year's budget, some of that revolving fund money that had been used by the parking authority actually appeared as part of your budget. And that was approximately $150,000, leaving that extra 100000 at the parking authority's discretion. So the money was the same, but the way it was presented to you in your budget was different because you had never before seen how that $250,000 was spent. And as I mentioned over a year ago when we did that for the first time, we were trying to, to, to make sure that the City Council had the opportunity to actually vote on the money that was being spent as part of the budget. 
But Mr. Clarkson, and, I understand all of that. But what I'm saying to you as we are sitting here, last Monday, the parking executive came to this body saying, I need an extra $100,000. And today we're saying, I don't need an extra $100,000. So I wanted to know what happened. So what uh, happened between last Monday and today that we needed $100,000, but now we don't need $100,000. I'm not looking at the words. I'm not looking at the way it was described, how the budget states or doesn't state. I'm just saying, because this comes back to what Councilor Farwell always says as far as transparency. Because if we're, at, if we're sitting here in front of the cameras and the community are watching us saying, last week I needed an extra $100,000 in order for me to do my job and do it properly. But roll forward, let's go fast forward one, one week and then we no longer need $100,000 because we just need to change the language. Because last week, it was never about the language. Not once was the language mentioned. But today, we're basically saying, oh, we just want to change the language. And that's why it, it, it kind of leaves us you know, wondering sometimes in terms of you know, the true meaning behind the, uh, the budget in the sense. Because if he's saying, I, I need an extra $100,000 in order for me to do my job, but today you show up and you basically say, well, you know, we, you know, it, it, all we need is to change the language. It just kind of leaves you uh, sitting in that position of wondering, you know, exactly what's going on. Well, and, and I'm sorry you feel that way, Councillor, but w what I would submit to you is that the team of department heads got together and tried to solve a problem, which they did. And I, the message for you is the same this week as it was last week, uh, and that is the parking authority needed full access to the $250,000 that was voted. But the way it was voted by this council restricted the access to that $250,000 and only allowed the parking authority to spend $150,000 of that two hundred and fifty. dollars So the message is the same. Uh, mm -mm. The request for the spending is the same. Um, uh, it, yes, sometimes the language we use is complicated and confusing. Uh, but it's all based on the fact that the language that was voted and what was presented to this council, it's not the fault of the council, back a year ago when you enabled this fund, restricted the ability of the parking authority to spend up to that 250000 So rather, frankly, than ask for another $100,000 that was not necessary, Working together, the team realized that they could accomplish what they needed to accomplish by simply asking you to pass the language that you've passed for several years, and that would restore the operations to the way they were before this item was passed last year. But, but Mr. Mr. CFO, Mr. Clarkson, I am not questioning any of that. If you had, if last week uh, the executive director came up and said. I want to make some adjustments, or you actually even yourself said, we want to make some adjustments on the language of, the particular, of this order. We wouldn't be talking about this today. But last week, it was not about the language. It was about, I need an extra $100,000 to run this. I need an increase in this particular item. And we're not increasing it today because now we're saying that, oh, no, we can do it with, with 250. That's what I'm questioning, not whether or not the language and whether the language said do A, B, or C. That's not the issue. I'm just saying that we were sitting here and we were told, I need to, we need to modify, mo uh, modify this order to increase this asking by, by another $100,000. And uh, Council uh, Lally came back and says, I'll introduce the extra money on the following council meeting. So we're here in the following council meeting. Now we're finding out that, oh, by the way, 250 was sufficient to begin with. That's what I'm, I'm a, I don't know how the rest of my colleagues feel. I'm just telling you that I feel that we were misled in the way financially because if it was 250 last week, it should have stayed at 250 last week and just today we would be talking about the modifications in the language. And we are not talking about the, the extra $100,000 and that's what I'm having a problem with. Understood, I believe, Councillor, that we are making a distinction without a difference and that the, 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 no matter how you slice it, uh, the parking authority and its executive director are trying to do the best they can with the tools they've been given and access the funds that were provided to them. And during the process of trying to unravel this admittedly confusing issue, 
they realized that they could resolve and get to where they needed to be by simply changing the language. And I would submit to you that although it made it more complicated and confusing, what they were trying to do uh, was to maintain the integrity of the finances of the parking authority and not ask for more money if they didn't need it and simply be asked to have the, the language that's traditionally been voted by this council to provide them access to funds to allow them that. So I certainly apologize for the confusion and the complexity of this, but I would say that I would rather the parking authority and the auditor's office and the budget director come up with a solution that they feel is proper and fair and appropriate rather than simply come back and ask for the additional $100,000 if they didn't need it and could have access to it by changing the language. So yes, it's confusing. Yes, it's complicated. But I think it's proper to do to solve the problem the way they did uh, because they're just trying to do the right thing. I could, uh, councilors, can we suspend for a minute? I understand we may have some problems transmitting the, the meeting, and I'd like to check with the BCA representative. We're back from recess. We did not conduct any business. However, for some reason, the transmission to BCA is Correct. not functioning properly. <coughs> that is not an issue now because we are back with live meetings and the public obviously is invited to come in and observe these proceedings. But they will put eventually, we are recording, and we will eventually put the meeting onto Brockton Community Access. So in obviously YouTube. there is a delay in viewing it, but those interested will be able to view the meeting in its entirety. Anything else, Mr. Clerk? I know under the open meeting law that is, it will be posted on YouTube and on Channel 12, so it's being recorded now, recorded live, obviously, so it will be posted as soon as, uh, probably later tonight, but definitely tomorrow morning, okay. which qualifies yeah. us under the open meeting law. And if I could bring a touch of humor to the meeting, we are spending quite a bit of time trying to find out why we're not spending 100000 <laughs> probably more time than we would spend if we were spending a hundred thousand so it's entirely up to you councillors we can debate this my suggestion would be somewhere along the line the mayor the chairman of the parking authority someone made a decision not to request additional funds they may want a supplemental appropriation during the fiscal year I don't know but it is important that we approve funding for the parking authority tonight because as of July 1st if there is no appropriation, there is no parking authority function. That department is shut down. So if someone wanted to file a resolve to have the mayor and the chairman of the parking authority come in at a future meeting and explain to us why suddenly we don't need $100,000, I have no problem with that. But uh, I do want to emphasize the importance of having an appropriation uh, or having this approved tonight so the parking authority can function. Um, I don't know who was speaking last. If it was me, uh, Council Rodriguez. I, uh, m Mr. President, I'm not saying I was. I was perfectly fine and w able and willing to uh, support 70, but I'm willing to go with 79 as well too because I wanted 70 to go forward. So minus the uh, minus the amount. But I just, you know, my whole question was uh, why the difference two day, you know, last week and not this week. But it's not to not to support the order because I. I was going to vote for 70, you know, because that's one of the things that we did. So it doesn't really matter. But I'm done. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Count, uh, Councilor Cardozo. So the director is here. Can he speak to this and what's in office and clarity? And sure. If he has something to add beyond the CFO, absolutely. Yeah, I hope this will, uh, will clear things up. Um, in fiscal 21, the order that was submitted for the revolving fund um, made things difficult in terms of the appropriations for our expenses because the expense language was not in there. Um, as Mr. Clarkson alluded to before, there's about $100,000 in fiscal 21 right now that we haven't been able to use appropriately. So the initial amendment that was put forth that was going to go with number 70 included trying to resolve the issue in fiscal 21. After reviewing it again, the cleaner way to do this would be to not do an amendment, to table number 70, 
and present the new order, number 79, with the language and the amount that is necessary. We put that before our parking board on Wednesday and they unanimously voted to support that. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Mr. Erickson. All right, so now we're back to the original motion that was made and seconded, and I, forgive me, I don't remember who made it, who seconded it, to reconsider item number 70. If it is successfully reconsidered, it can then be tabled, and the operative agenda item for the parking <coughs> authority will be number 79. Is that clear? All right, so all in favor of reconsidering item number 70. All those opposed? Item number 70 is now reconsidered. Mr. President. Uh, Council Lally. I move to table item number 70. Second. Second. All right, there's been a motion, mo motion made and seconded to table item 70. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Now, for clarity, does someone want to move to take 79 out of, Mr. Out of President. order so we can dispense with that? I would move that we take item number 79 out of order um, and move under the suspension of the rules and act on this tonight. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded to take this out of order and act on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Any debate, discussion on well, item number 79? Let me read it. Uh, yes, please do. Item 79 ordered. In accordance with the provisions and stipulations of section 53E and one half of chapter 44 of the Mass General Laws recommending the reauthorization of Parking Authority Revolving Fund to receive revenues from parking violations, fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. Said funds to be expended by the Parking Authority to pay expenses of parking regulation enforcement, repair and maintenance of lots, facilities and equipment and capital projects, but expenditures for capital projects shall require the written approval both of the Parking Authority Board of Directors and the mayor for fiscal year 2022. Amounts in excess of $250,000 shall be credited to the general fund. All right, the question comes on adoption under suspension of the rules, which has been approved. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Mr. President. Uh, Council Lally. Uh, while we're on a roll, um, the director of the authority has also uh, asked that I take item number 86 um, out of order and move to act on it this evening. It is a bill that needs to be paid before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, he is prepared to speak on it. All right, so there's a motion made to suspend the rules and act on this this evening. Who seconded that? Second. Second. All right, seconded by Monahan and, and uh, Thompson. Uh, would you make a brief explanation, uh, Mr. Ackerson? Number 86. Number 86. Recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $23,000 from parking authority full-time salaries to snow removal and $21,285 from parking authority part-time salaries to snow removal for a total transfer of $44,285. Thank you. Um, we have an invoice from last year's snow removal for uh, roughly $94,000. Um, the budget for last year was $45,000. So we're looking to move money from uh, full-time and part-time salaries that were not used in the past fiscal year to help cover this expense. Questions? Adoza. Just because I know there's another item where we're moving um, snow removal monies. Um, so why are we moving this amount into snow removal when you're in front of us, just to clarify, asking for money currently and then we're moving money out of us. Maybe Troy can answer that from snow. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Well, the reason that we're asking to move it is because for that line item for the year, 45,000 was budgeted. The amount that we incurred in expense over the year was 95000 So we need to cover the additional expense money. There was small amounts that we were able to move without coming before council. 
mm -hmm. but the amounts that are before you now are needed so that we can cover that invoice and need your approval. So that invoice was for what? For snow removal for the parking? Snow removal for all of the lots that are under the parking authority. Okay. And if you were to ask why is it being taken care of this late, Mm -hmm. um, there were some disputes with the amount of the original invoice. Uh, we worked with law on this and have actually reduced that invoice by about $15,000 before we actually got to the point where we wanted to pay it. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything okay. else? All right. We need a hand vote to suspend the rules and take it out. Uh, act on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Now we act on the actual agenda item. Any further debate? No further debate. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Thanks. We now go back to item number 73, I believe, Mr. Clerk. That is correct. Ordinance, an ordinance amending towing regulations, be it ordained by the City of City Council of the City of Brockton, Section 12-28 Towing. I refer to Chairman Ian Erie and the Ordinance Committee. Item 74. 74, ordinance, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton that the City Council adopt the following amendments to the ordinance establishing licensing and regulation for adult use marijuana establishment, section 1.003, 1-C. Again, refer to ordinance, <coughs> item 75. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out of Sunset Ave, extending from Bouvet Avenue easterly a distance of 337.29 feet, and for that purpose it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. <coughs> Clerk, this says refer to real estate. Should it be planning it and should FinCom? Be planning and FinCom, yes. My, All right. My uh, this uh, item 75 will be referred to the planning board and to finance committee. My mistake. Thank you. That's no problem. Uh, item 76. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out of Berkeley Street from Rutland Square northerly to Market Street, a distance of 354.79 feet. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Again, this one is referred to planning and finance. Item number 77. Ordered that the mayor or treasurer collector be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the pro property consisting of 690 square feet located and known as plot 114, Hilberg Ave Avenue, parcel ID 072-267, to Alessandra Brown, 137 Hillborough Gav, Brockton, Mass, 02301, for the purchase price of $500. Said property to be sold under the Abutter Lot Program and to be sold with a permanent non-buildable restriction. Said property shall also merge with the budding lot of the purchaser. Referred to Chairman Lally in real estate. Item number 78. That the law department in, in the clerk's office be authorized to correct a scrivener's error in the order conveying plot 6152 Market Street, Brockton, Mass, under the Abutter Lot Program with a permanent non-buildable restriction so that the transfer on the deed be made to Antonio Barros. The prior order authorized conveyance to Fidelis Barros, Antonio's spouse, who is deceased. Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Ian Erie. Mr. President, if I might, I would like to take this um, particular item and suspend the rules and act on it this evening. I will explain why this was taken care of uh, a couple of months ago. As it indicated, we had a Scribner's error in regards to the um, uh, paperwork and the title into the correct name being placed. Unfortunately, had the husband's uh, name present and uh, he's been deceased for a few years and, instead of having the wife's name there. So it ended up on everybody's desk but mine uh, from here in Helen back. And uh, I do want to get that taken care of this evening so that they can continue to Second. move forward. All right, motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and act on this this evening. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Thank you. Uh, do you have anything to add, Legislative Council? Nope, he described it well. Okay. Everyone understand this is just correcting the original order because so unfortunately it, it, order. it went, it went, it went the through real estate and the person. purchase was made for $1,500. That all happened. It, it's, 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 it's the title, so. So can you please clarify? Got voted. You got voted. We have to do it again. Councilor Cardozo, go ahead. Are you doing it right here? Clarify yeah. what we're voting on, please. Yeah, so what happens is um, a couple months ago, 
this, this body approved an order to uh, transfer land under the abutters lot program by deed to the gentleman that's identified here. We can't do that because unfortunately he is deceased and his, um, his, his wife is, is now the um, sole owner of the property. So it just corrects the, the, the chain of title, so to speak, so that it goes to the appropriate party. Whereas your prior order, I just identified someone that they couldn't deed land to. So is it, is it going from Fidelis Barrows to Antonia Barrows? That it would be the, the, the city granting to Antonia Barrows, whereas your prior order said um, Fidelis Barrows. Okay, because he's deceased. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, anything further? No. If not, the clerk please call the roll. Isaac? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Brady. Item number 80. Ordered recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $1,052 from Assessor's Purchase of Services Consultants to Assessor's Personal Services Holiday. Mr. President. No, uh, Mr. Council President. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to, uh, again, ask that this Council uh, suspend the rules and move forward on this matter tonight. Uh, uh, the CFO is here to explain uh, the reason why, uh, as per the email he sent uh, earlier today. But quickly, uh, this is just a uh, quick, uh, small amount of uh, $1,052 uh, to compensate the employees when the new Juneteenth uh, holiday was designated. So their budget did not allow for uh, or did not have monies in the account for this holiday. And they're asking uh, to, to transfer the money so that they can uh, pay their employees for this holiday. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded. Uh, Thousand bucks. Questions on the rules. Questions on suspending the rules. Question is on suspending the rules and acting on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed. All right. We now proceed to approving the order. Would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's just uh, yeah, item yeah. number eighty. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 81. Ordered recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $300,000 from non net school spending to stabilization fund. Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I again uh, seek a, a motion to act on this matter under a suspension of the rules and act on it uh, tonight. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and act on this evening. All in favor? All opposed? Suspension granted. Now we proceed to the merits of the order. Can I, I have a question. Yeah, you've got to read it, though. Did you? Can I just have the, the CFO explain this? Yes, certainly. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Council, when you approved the fiscal year 22 budget recently, uh, part of that approval included um, transferring a million dollars from the stabilization fund to balance next year's budget. This transfer and the one that follows, both of which together equal a million dollars, constitute excess funding in this current year, FY21's budget, that we're making available for next year. So this money just replenishes the million dollars that you approved as a transfer to balance the budget in your previous vote. This amount, uh, because for a portion of the year the schools were remote and the buses weren't running, uh, the school committee uh, deemed that this money was appropriate to transfer. Um, I would have liked to have, you know, the superintendent here to discuss it a little bit, but okay. The, the uh, point well taken, Counselor. There was a letter uh, that, the, that the, the school department did provide uh, assenting to this transfer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything further? If not, would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? 
Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 82. Ordered, recommending that the City Council provide authorization to transfer monies in the amount of $700,000 from Department of Public Works Highway Division Snow Removal to Stabilization Fund. Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Thompson. Thank you. I, again, I would like to uh, move forward under a suspension of the rules to take this matter tonight. Second. All right, motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and act on this this evening. All those in favor? All those opposed? Rules are suspended. We act on it this evening. Count, uh, Mr. Claxon. This is the tandem article to the one you just passed. This money uh, is excess in the city's snow and ice account in the Department of Public Works. And the former DPW Commissioner Larry Rowley did offer a letter uh, assenting to this transfer. All right. Any further debate or discussion? If not, the clerk will call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Mr. Mr. President? I Council Azak. Yes, I would just like to thank Mr. Clarkson because he does a really good job about keeping us informed, sending us emails in advance, letting us know that things are going to be taken under suspension of the rules, which I, I truly appreciate because in past years things would happen and we'd sit here and we would have no idea. So thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Thank you. Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Yanniri. I'd like to move for reconsideration in hopes it does Second. not prevail for items 80, 81, and 82. All right. We have a motion to... Reconsider 80, 81, and 82 in the hopes that it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Reconsideration fails. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Clerk. 83, ordered that the City of Brockton appropriates the amount of $19,100,000 for the purpose of paying costs of designing and constructing water system improvements but not limited to water main replacements in I, the North Main Street, North Montello Street Loop, two North Main Street and three Martlin Ave Avenue, repairs and paving incidental to the making of such improvements and the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto. To meet this appropriation, the city treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow said amount under Mass General Law Chapter 44, subsection 8-4, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Subsection 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Further ordered that the City Treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Mass General Laws Chapter 44A any and all bonds or notes of the City authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Refer to the Finance Committee, 84. <clears throat> Ordered in accordance with the General Laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditure of an, of an additional grant award in the amount of $25,000 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal Year 2021, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr., Community Safety Initiative Grant, to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 2021, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr., Community Safety Initiative Grant Fund. Refer to the Finance Committee, 85. Ordered recommending that the City Council provide appropriation and borrowing authorization for $360,900,000 for the purpose of funding all or a portion of the unfunded pension liability of the, of the retirement system of the City of Brockton. Refer to the Finance Committee. Item 86. Uh, strike that. Item 87. 87. <clears throat> 87. Ordered that the Mayor and or Treasurer Collector be authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to convey the property consisting of 4,739 square feet, located and known as Plot 66, 243 Green Street, parcel ID 051-081, to Nicole Wiggins, 245 Green Street, Brockton, Mass. 02301, for the purchase price of $1,400. Said property to be sold under the Abutter Lot Program and to be sold 
with a permanent non-buildable restriction. Said property shall also merge with the budding lot of the purchaser. I believe this should go to real estate uh, and Chairman Lally, am I correct? Correct. All right, then I'll make that notation. Refer to real estate, item 88. 88 ordered that the City Council reviews an exemption from the residency requirement in accordance with the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2-110, City of Brockton Ordinance, Waiver of Residency Extension in reference to Anne Marie Raymond. Referred to the Finance Committee. 89. Resolved to have Dr. Richard Herman appear before a committee of the City Council to update the community and the City Council on the continuing efforts of the City of Brockton concerning the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Referred to the Finance Committee. Number 90, be it resolved that the City Solicitor, Chief of Police and Fire Chief for the City of Brockton come before the Finance Committee to discuss state law and the process of hiring, promotion and application of civil service for employment in the Brockton Police and Fire Departments. Be it further resolved that the individuals be invited to discuss diversity practices for hiring and promotions in the Brockton Police and Fire Department. I refer to finance. Councilor, that will come up in August uh, because Councilor uh, Cardoza has a scheduling conflict and would like to participate. So that will be on your August FinCom agenda. We, file. Uh, we have a late file, uh, Councilors. Late file resolved that a representative of Fuss and O'Neill Inc. be allowed to make a brief presentation on Brockton's integrated water infrastructure as requested by the city engineer and is required by a grant for which the city is an applicant or recipient. Uh, is there a motion to uh, accept the late file and allow this young lady to so moved. Uh, present? Second. All right, motion made and seconded to accept the late file. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Uh, thank you for your patience. Well, my computer is waking up. Thank you for uh, entertaining this. I know the evening hour is late and you've had a long agenda and I will promise to keep it quick. Um, but I am happy to entertain additional questions or provide other information if you have any. Uh, some of you may recall that uh, the city accepted the award for this project, which was funded through the MVP Action Grant Program. Uh, about two years ago now. And we're not quite up on the screen. Hang on. Mr. President, could, could you take on the mask? It's hard to. Would you it's, mind it, taking your mask off? You, you, you may Maybe take off your mask, Miss, if you wish. There we go. Um, so this project was accepted from the state about two years ago. Uh, it was extended, it was originally a one-year grant and it was extended due to COVID. So I wanna give you a brief overview of the findings of the project. Um, in particular, this project focused on increasing flood resiliency along the corridor of the Salisbury Brook and Salisbury Plain River. As I'm sure you're aware, flooding has been a major challenge in Brockton. Uh, there's an image here of the Sycamore and Belmont intersection uh, and also some images from 2010 that demonstrate the flooding problems. Part of what we did at this pro during this project was to model the flooding that has uh, been experienced to better understand the flood inundation boundaries and the areas that are at risk. Uh, in doing so, we outlined all of the parcels that are within the floodplains for various size storms from the more frequent two-year occurrence to the more rare 100 uh, and 500 year events. And as you can see in this graphic, uh, there are a lot of residential properties that are affected as well as community centers, schools, retail, et cetera. So there's quite a lot of properties that are within the floodplain. And the purpose of this project was to develop a comprehensive plan that would take a citywide approach to try to address this problem citywide rather than looking at site-specific uh, resiliency measures or protections for particular properties. So again, we were focused on the corridor of the Salisbury Brook and Salisbury Plain River. Uh, there was a change in the grant uh, late in the game that we also added some information on Trout Brook and some additional modeling, but I'm not going to touch on that tonight. Um, and the goal of this project was to really look for ways to use nature-based solutions to improve the situation. Nature-based solutions are approaches that mimic natural systems or work with natural systems. So for instance, we're gonna be talking about increasing flood storage uh, higher in the watershed 
obviously we don't want to just push this problem downstream to your neighbors. And so we were looking at ways to address flooding within uh, this corridor. So again, nature-based solutions allow us to create additional flood capacity within uh, that corridor to store flood waters, to slow them down, uh, and to uh, give them space to spread out and be absorbed more gradually. Uh, it's often that these approaches are more effective than more traditional gray infrastructure approaches like flood walls or pumps. Uh, in the long term, they can be more cost effective, and they also offer the opportunity to incorporate green space into the city. Uh, so when you're creating a floodable uh, riparian corridor along the river, that's also an opportunity to create space for people to enjoy the river, to access the river, uh, and to have that interaction with nature as well. And also importantly, nature-based solutions have become a very uh, heavy focus of both the state and a lot of federal grant programs. And so in pursuing these types of solutions, it makes it easier for the city to attract grant funding to actually implement them. So through this project, uh, we looked at a variety of, of different potential flood storage sites throughout the corridor, uh, and we considered a number of different factors as we were looking for the most promising ones. So we were looking at those areas where we modeled and showed the greatest risk of flood inundation. We were also looking at uh, a ranking of at-risk properties that included those residential properties, retail, et cetera, as I showed you before. We were looking for neighborhoods where that risk clusters uh, so that you have higher risk not necessarily a single parcel that is um, particularly valuable on its own, but perhaps there's a, a large neighborhood that experiences flooding and should be considered as a risk cluster. We also looked at city-owned properties as opportunities to address flooding uh, on land already owned by the city. We looked at undeveloped properties where it might be possible for the city to acquire land and use that to incorporate into these types of solutions. And we did some cost-benefit analysis to try to find approaches that were, uh, again, cost-effective. Uh, we also did consider uh, looking at developed properties and whether relocation or buyouts at certain locations would be effective for uh, particularly removing properties that are uh, experiencing repetitive losses from flooding and that can't be effectively protected in other ways, so that those uses could be relocated to safer locations. And it was our intent to integrate this planning with existing city plans uh, and economic development goals so that it was incorporated into larger uh, priorities for, again, green space, uh, river access, et cetera. So I'm going to focus on three key recommendations that came out of the plan. Uh, the first is to install a spillway gate at Ellis Brett Pond. And in doing so, uh, this would allow greater control over the flood waters that can be stored in the existing space at Ellis Brett. Uh, it has particular benefits for the more frequent storm events, the two-year and 10-year event. And uh, for the upper reaches of the river, it can result in uh, anywhere from six inches to a foot of flood reductions during those storms. And the chart that you're seeing on the right hand of the screen there uh, shows the impact at different places along the river corridor. So you can see in particular uh, from Elmwood to Moraine Street, there is uh, over a foot of reduction in the flood levels that would be experienced there during the two-year storm and nearly a, a foot of reductions during the 10-year storm. And those reductions continue down throughout uh, the watershed uh, all the way down to the Kmart Plaza, although obviously they decrease as you move southward. The second, second recommendation was to dredge Ellis Brett Pond and to excavate uh, with the intent of restoring that ecosystem uh, to additional wetland capacity, but also increasing the available space there to hold floodwaters. So in combination with the gate, that would give you uh, greater storage that could be held behind that gate again, and those waters could be uh, released slowly so that you don't have a large volume of water making its way down the river all at once during a storm. This again has flood reductions for the more frequent events, but also had significant improvements all the way through the more rare 100 year event. Uh, I will note that this option is more complicated in terms of permitting, uh, because the work would be in wetlands and uh, would require extensive permitting under state and federal law. It's also expensive um, because there would be nine acres of excavation involved, and I'll come back to costs at the end. 
Uh, but you can see again here that there are um, some substantial additional benefits that come from this option, particularly for the upper part of the watershed in those more frequent events, um, up to six inches in some cases. And I should note, uh, for the purposes of reading these graphs, that the numbers you're seeing are in feet, so that's 0.2 feet in the top number. Uh, the third recommendation is to restore a uh, floodplain area along the river at select undeveloped parcels in the area of Sargent's Way. And there's a few images here showing what that may look like. Uh, the idea here is to take the narrow river corridor and use the space that's available on city parcels and undeveloped portions of uh, privately owned parcels to look at places where that floodplain can be expanded. Basically, the river channel uh, and its banks uh, would be widened to allow floodwaters to spread out rather than being confined into a narrow channel. And again, that offers the opportunity to slow down those floodwaters, slow how quickly they're making it downstream, and concentrating that volume of water. Uh, this, in particular, has increased impacts for reducing flooding at the south end of the city. Uh, and so you'll see here that the benefits focus uh, on the area from Pine Avenue down to uh, Sargent's Way. And the uh, benefits here uh, involve up to about a half foot or a little bit more than a half foot of additional flood reductions. So the ultimate uh, outcome of our report was to recommend a combined alternative that pulls these three uh, recommendations together. And when doing so, uh, the results allow us to uh, reduce flood elevations in the river corridor up to 18 inches, which is quite substantial when you're thinking about the potential impact to residences and uh, other structures within the floodplain. And you can see here um, that those reductions extend uh, for a large way down through the river corridor, uh, including uh, with the addition of the third recommendation, uh, a total of about a foot of flood reduction in the south end of the city. In terms of implementation, uh, the costs for these different projects range from about 650000 projected for the installation of the spillway gate at Ellis Brett Pond. Uh, and as I said, the excavation is much more expensive. That would be about a $3.5 million project uh, to dredge and add additional capacity at Ellis Brett Pond, and another approximately $3.5 million to uh, do the floodplain restoration on the south end of the city. So the total would be about seven to seven and a half million. There's obviously a cost range associated with that because this is early in the engineering process. Uh, and I do want to highlight that, as I alluded to before, nature-based solutions are increasingly attractive for grant funding, both at the state and federal level. Uh, one program that we think in particular would be good for this project if the city wished to implement it is FEMA's BRIC grant, which is Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. It's a new grant uh, that was uh, 2020 was the first year that it was offered. It is a 75% grant with a 25% non-federal match. Uh, other state funds could potentially be used to make up that amount. And so that match that you'd be looking at would be on the order of about 1.8 million. Um, and there are other alternatives that could be added to this and considered in the future. Uh, for instance, the additional work that was performed at Trout Brook also suggested some opportunities to reduce flooding in that part of the city. Uh, and with that, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or provide additional information. Uh, Councilor Azak. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, is it possible to get this email to us so we have this yes. information on hand? Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. If, if, uh, Councilor Thompson. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to um, uh, clarify. So the, the, you have the recommendations of uh, one, two, and three, and then the amount of water that it would save. So each, each recommendation builds upon the last in that chart as to those are additional savings uh, as we move through the recommendations. Is that right? Uh, so each of the, on the individual slides, those are uh, the reductions you would expect from that recommendation alone, but this one combines the three into uh, a total project. Okay, the one that's on screen now. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, when, when it comes to dredging uh, Ellis Brook Pond, um, you know, I've been up there many times. Uh, there's a lot of growth uh, out of that pond right now, and I imagine being used by um, a lot of wildlife uh, at this moment. So if we dredge it, um, number one is how deep would we go? And number two, 
Um, maybe you could discuss the effects it would have on the wildlife that's currently using that area. Sure, that's an excellent question. Uh, so the first point is that um, a large portion of that area is already functioning as wetland, which is able to occur because the groundwater is within a certain depth of the surface. So that means that we don't have a lot of depth to go in some places because once, once the ground's already wet, you're not gonna get additional flood storage from that area. So in some locations, um, it would be only a foot or maybe two feet of excavation. Uh, but there are other areas higher, um, sort of to the north. I'll flip back to the graphic here. Um, so sort of, I'm not sure if my cursor actually moves. Um, but in the sort of uh, northwest end, uh, there are areas that are currently upland where there would be potential to uh, excavate deeper and both have fewer impacts to existing wetlands, but also get, a, get greater capacity um, for that particular area because you're able to dig deeper to get to that same level before you hit groundwater. Um, but the intent with the entire project would be to restore the area that's being excavated to wetland. So you'd be um, disturbing it temporarily, but then putting back wetland plants, native vegetation. And in many cases, uh, a lot of that area, my understanding is that it is currently occupied by invasive species. And so at the same time, we'd be able to actually improve the habitat by removing those invasives and replacing native plants when the restoration was complete. Great, I appreciate that. Um, and then the spill gate, would that, would that be a fully automatic spill gate? Or, because currently we have the planks that's yes. gotta be manually inputted, so the spill gate would be automatic? Yes, the intent would be to uh, integrate the spillway gate with the SCADA system so that it could be operated remotely, which also uh, would make it much safer for staff to actually operate when there is a storm event in place. And it, would this plan contemplate a potentially step-by-step -step process if, if at this time we only had the monies to move forward with the spill gate, which seems to be the cheaper option, mm -hmm. and then at some point in the future we could always make use of these additional recommendations, is that correct? Yes, okay. yes, and I would say that um, of the three options, the spillway gate is, uh, has the, definitely has the highest value per dollar for an individual standalone solution. Well, I appreciate you coming in and thank you for your time. That's all, Mr. President. Uh, Council Monahan and then Council Lally. Oh, how did I beat you? You're, you're younger and faster, Council. That is true. So how do we proceed going forward here, get grant money or what have you, because this is really a long time in coming. Mm -hmm. So what's the procedure? So um, I made reference to the FEMA BRIC grant, which would be an excellent opportunity to fund the next stages of this project. The next stages would be detailed design to refine uh, the area of excavation to get deeper into the permitting issues and understand what would be the most effective pathway. Uh, and my understanding is that currently the city's hazard mitigation plan is not up to date and is in the process, I believe, of being updated. Uh, that needs to be back in place and approved by MEMA and FEMA before the city is eligible for uh, any of the FEMA grants. So focusing on getting that plan up to date would be the first priority and then looking at uh, this funding solution would be my next recommendation to be able to advance the project forward. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Council Lally. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just had one quick question um, talking about the BRIC grant. Mm -hmm. uh, off the top of your head, I know it's, it's, it's late and it's, it's kind of an, uh, you know, uh, a, a bit of a further down the line question. Um, would you have any other grants in mind in addition to the BRIC grant like, that you would suggest we go out for? Mm -hmm. So uh, this project, as I mentioned, was funded under the MVP program, which is the state's climate resiliency, uh, and it would certainly make sense to go for additional funding under that program as well. That program allows up to $2 million per individual project and also has a 25% match. Um, Ideally, it would, be, it would be great to combine the two programs so that your matches from the state could meet the federal and vice versa. Uh, it may be a little bit tricky to make the timelines work up, uh, but that would be something to explore further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Castro. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for waiting. This has been so worthwhile. I represent the south side of the city, so it's the, from the Grove Street to Pine Avenue on is my area. And I have constituents who live on Perkins Avenue who in spring or, or often fall 
their, their, their backyards are totally underwater, and yet it's not a flood zone, it's not conservation land. I, I suspect this will help. I, without looking at the specific locations, mm -hmm. I, would, I would say probably yes. Mm -hmm. There are some complicating issues at the south end of the city, particularly down by the Kmart area, yes. um, because of the way that water backs up uh, through, there's a, I believe there's a, um, floodgate's not the right word, but there's a, there's a structure that uh, allows some backwater to come up towards the Kmart Plaza, mm -hmm. and that is a, a complicating factor, but uh, it's, it's highly likely that this would Help some of your Thank you. I look forward to pursuing this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else before I go to Councilor Razak again? Councilor Razak. Thank you. Um, so you've mentioned grants a few times. So is that something that you you, they would, you would work with with the city, or is it our um, is it planning DPW, the mayor's office? I mean, you even have DW Fields Park in here. So I know they apply for some of their own grants. So mm -hmm. how? What's the process? Because where city council is not part of the grant process, right. uh, we only find out about things, you know, usually once they're done. So we want to make sure that we don't miss this opportunity. So who is are you in contact with the departments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have um, originally this grant was pursued uh, in collaboration with Mayor Carpenter. Um, but it has since been primarily the purview of the DPW department, um, and the Trout Brook project uh, has been uh, largely the focus of uh, economic development and planning. So we've been working closely with those two departments, and um, yes, we, we do work with our clients to put together grants um, and help to pursue those funds. Okay, so there's nothing we need to do as a city council to make sure that, uh, to follow up, that you're, it's all set. Is what uh, you're I wouldn't us. say that it's all set, but um, to the extent that you are able to influence departments or influence the mayor to pursue this work on behalf of your constituents, that would certainly be uh, a benefit. That's what I. That's what I want mm -hmm. to make ask. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you again. You're thank welcome. you, Mr. President. Anyone else? If not, a motion to accept the report and place it on file would be in order. Motion so to moved. accept. Second. Motion made and properly seconded to accept the report, place it on file, and you'll get the PowerPoint out. Uh, anything from you, Mr. Clerk? No, if you can just send us to the clerk's office a I PowerPoint, will. we'll get it out. All, right. all in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Uh, Thank you. Else? No, uh, no other? Can I have personal uh, Yes, uh, Councilor Cardoza. Okay, so first, something nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, we had a vaccine clinic at Ega Park, and I just want to thank the folks that participated and sponsored this. Uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, Brockton Workers Association, the Justice Center, the Mass Nurses Association, and my organization, K Verde and Women United, and Mass Kosh. It was a great event. We gave out um, food, we had music, we had um, ice cream cards for the kids that participated, and I believe we had about 40 um, folks that were vaccinated, so I want to thank them very much for doing that, and it was great to collaborate with those organizations, and I hope we keep up the good work in making sure we get our community vaccinated. On another note, I just want to express um, my feelings about um, a couple things tonight. First, item number six, um, the appointment of Mr. Anthony Michael Branch as um, constable. There was a motion to uh, suspend the rules and act on it this evening. I feel like there was no reason why that wasn't acted on this evening uh, and referred out. There's nothing that's going to change. The reports that we got from the police um, were positive. There was, there's nothing that's going to change from now until the FinCom meeting that is going to change people's opinions. Is, it seems like people's minds are already made up on what they want to do. This gentleman is a gentleman that served this city in many different capacities. He is a um, sitting school committee member right now for Southeastern. He's on the Cape Verdean Association's board. He's done many, many events. He's a part of the NAACP for the mayor. He's the mayor's appointment. If it was anybody else that was sitting in front of us tonight, I believe we would have acted on it. We would have said congrats and sent that person on their way. But because they're a personal 
issues with this gentleman from some folks on this council. That didn't happen this evening, so I'm very disappointed. We have to be very careful not to let our personal opinions about people interfere with their livelihood. He paid $250 for his application, and he is a, you know, a good member in the community. Whatever is in his past wasn't part of the information that the police, off the police chief has sent to us. He said that he was clear. We should have acted on that, so I'm very disappointed, and I hope that his appointment goes through because we can't continue to behave this way, put our personal feelings aside about people, and do the right thing. Secondly, the folks that participated tonight, I still believe that, you know, it's great we're back in person, that the community should participate in a lot of these things. We have a couple items coming up that are huge, $19 million to improve our water system. We have the retirement funds, that's what, another $3 million or so. There are a lot of things that I think, you know, the community should participate in and have a voice. It's their money, it's their taxes that they're paying. And so I don't want to discourage anyone from coming into City Hall and inquiring a lot. Oftentimes we don't know the procedures. There are even people, you know, councilors that don't know the procedures that have been here forever. The council president makes mistakes, you know, a, a few times himself. None of us are perfect. <coughs> so the public, may not know the procedures, it's up to council president to educate them, at least acknowledge that they're here, thank, for, thank them for coming in. Council president uh, Shirley Azak used to do that oftentimes, stand up and say thank you all for participating, but tonight XYZ is going to occur, and I think that that's how we should treat our, our, the members of the public, not disrespect them by telling them, you know, go home um, and not explaining to them what the procedures are. So I'm really disappointed in that. But again, I encourage members to not give up, continue to participate in government, be involved, call your counselors. I get a lot of calls from people. I'm not the only counselor. We have 11 counselors, well, 10 now. Um, write to your counselors, ask about the agenda items are all online. You can access the agenda items. Go on there, you know, if there's something that doesn't seem right to you, call your counselor, write to your counselor. Let's continue to participate because that's what it's about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Cardozo, the, 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 the chair would say to you once again, please don't accuse anyone on the council of having a personal issue with an applicant. If you get Mr. Branch to agree that I can release the letter that came over from Officer Costello, I would be very happy to make that letter available to the public because you're always the one that says transparency. <coughs> issuing information, reaching out, being transparent. So have Mr. Branch send an email to me and I would be more than happy to release that letter and then we'll let the public decide whether those of us who objected um, to going forward, just a minute please. Okay, but I, I don't know if this was, I think that was Councillor's personal uh, recognition. I don't know, I don't think this is a debate right now. No, about it's not an a item debate. We, she, has, she has accused some of us of allegedly having a personal. I don't think this should personal, be on camera. I mean, I, I don't really think it this is. going to be on camera. Well, if you have, uh, you need to discuss with so, Councillor. No, if you'll I take a seat, I'll finish in a minute. I'm I'll the presiding officer. I'll stand up until officer. it's my turn. Thank <laughs> exactly. you. Okay. So, so disrespectful. if you do that, Councillor, I'd be happy to work with you. We'll That's get the information out. If you want that information, I was provided the appropriate information that I need to make my decision. Well, if you want anything additional, that's on you to get that. As, as not a on moment me. of personal privilege, don't s accuse people of having a, Didn't mention an your name, Mr. President. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, then. Treat, treat your colleagues with respect. It's time for you to get your information. I have mine. <clears throat> so just to follow up with moment of council's uh, recognition to follow up which I made the mistake and I should have at the beginning of the meeting clarified because everybody at home isn't familiar with our process. The reason I took those items under suspension of the rules is because we're right now city council meetings are in summer session and we will not meet again to almost a month. That's the only reason that we took the police um, the police promotions under suspension of the rules, and that's why I also um, asked that we take Mr. Branch's uh, appointment under suspension of the rules. So I just wanted to clarify that because sometimes people at home don't realize why we're doing things. So thank you. You're welcome. Hey, uh, Councilman DeCastro. Thank you. 
Yesterday at the Frederick Douglass Garden at 3 p.m., there was a reading of Frederick Douglass's moving what, um, what the slave thinks of the 4th of July. And there were about 40 or 50 people who showed up, and many read paragraphs of it in different languages. And it's, it's a most beautiful writing. Um, e even paragraph by paragraph, it's, it's very worthwhile to read or to listen to. And I want to commend everyone from the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association who participated in it, and also guests and other people from the community. John Drazinskis and Shirley Hopgood are running the association. They did a very good job. It was a beautiful, hot day, sunshine, and very moving experience. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? There being no further business, meeting is adjourned.